In March of this year, our cat Onyx passed away after a long struggle with asthma. After we said our goodbyes, we faced a home that for the first time in my children's life had been without a pet. My wife Valerie and I had made this decision to expand our family by adopting two cats 15 years ago. And now our children feel they are ready for kittens. While we as a family aren't there yet, we've been planning. Around that time that Onyx passed, a fellow cat lover invited me to join a Facebook group called Cat Book. As you can imagine, this group is a place for people to share photos, videos, short stories chronicling the exploits of their beloved feline friends. Think cute cat videos and personalize it. On Cat Book, one finds a community of humans who love their feline home companions so much who get so much joy out of the relationship that they must share it with the world in real time as it happens. With that being said, the narratives on Cat Book aren't all catnip and laser pointers. There are some real compelling stories there too. Not like our friend, not unlike our friend Hobbes in the Time for All Ages story, many of these cats have had a rough go at life. There are some stories of an, a new owner who is convinced that a divine force has brought them and their cat together. Others are of an owner who is now taking on cats number three, four, or more, expanding an already adequately sized family. And still others concerned for the stray cats, but unable to take them in themselves, lobby on behalf of the forlorn felines to get them a, into a good forever home. When I read these stories, I begin to wonder at what point is someone or some family ready, really ready to take on an addition, any addition? When is the right time to expand the family, be it with pets or children, or maybe by even taking in friends in need or an extended family that needs to stay with you? What is the motivation to even want to take on such a big responsibility? And what about physical growth makes us think that other kinds of growth are, growth are possible? within the new normal of an expanded family. In some way, I think I have always wondered these things, but never thought to articulate them in this way. Of course, I've known people that had pets. I've known families who hosted exchange students or took in downtrodden extended families for a time, and even those who take care of their aging parents. All these things I did not experience growing up. I felt that we could do these things, but we only managed having rabbits, for example, for just a couple of years, and then we moved them on to new homes. I always felt that as a child, there was no right time to expand our family in whatever form that might take. Perhaps there was something blocking us from opening our hearts or our home. But if we did, there were also limitations that we would put on this invitation. American psychologist, Abraham Maslow created a model for human needs, which has helped me make sense of this predicament and helped answer some questions I had had on when one might be ready for additional uh, responsibilities such as this. If you're not familiar with this model, it is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Maslow looked at what motivated people in positive ways and concluded that when a person's basic or efficiency needs are met, then they will strive for growth or being needs. Some of those are understanding in, in his extended hierarchy, there's understanding and aesthetic. And at the pinnacle of his initial ones is called self-actualization. Self-actualization is when a person is motivated by being the best person they could be. The self-actualized person willingly takes on new challenges and responsibilities because they are attuned to the innate desire to grow to one's full potential. So to put this in context, when a person's deficiency needs, which are of a few varieties of physiological, the safety, feeling of belonging, or feeling of esteem, when those needs are not met, their life's motivation may be to meet one of those needs instead of seeking all the, to be all they can be. It is a very self-centered world where taking on the responsibility of caring for another, human, animal, or even vegetation, would feel crushing almost. It would be as if climbing a steep mountain and then having another full person or more 
strapped onto your back, going up that same mountain. Given that choice, our instinct in this hierarchy of needs would be to opt to not necessarily burden ourselves because our own journey is struggle enough. However, that in the church world, there's another dimension at work here, the dimension of faith just as there are psychologists such as Maslow who have traced our cognitive development, others, James Fowler, a prominent one among them, have tracked human faith development. Fowler's work counts six stages of development, just the third of which puts us comparable to the top of Maslow's growth pyramid. And while cognitive and faith development track slightly different behaviors, their intersection is one which I'd like to take a little more closer look at. And to do so, I'm going to take from a book I read recently. It's called Two Dogs and a Parrot. The author, you may recognize the name, is Benedictine nun Joan Chittister. And it's about her experiences expanding her convent family to include the three animals, the two dogs and a parrot, at different times in her, in her time at the convent. After the tale of her first dog, which is an Irish setter named Danny, Joan was faced with a difficult decision. It, she talks about Danny first and at the end, he has now uh, just recently died and the nuns were in mourning naturally. They're also in discernment about whether they ought to even have another pet on the premises as Danny had been a handful, but he also held a special place in their hearts. And they weren't sure if taking on another one would do the same. They had not really even been sure in the, in the first place that the pet was a good idea at a convent. But Danny came into their lives at a time where they were open to the idea. And so their workplace became a home for pets. Yet Danny's death put that into question, grief taking hold of their decision for the moment. Their grieving and discernment met with opposition, however, when Joan received a call from a breeder who knew Danny from the visits in the convent and she felt bad. The breeder suggested they consider taking in a golden retriever of hers. They were not interested, but the breeder insisted saying that the alternative was the dog would be put down, euthanized because it grew too big for its breed. The breeder simply did not pay attention to the golden named Duffy once he grew too big to be a show dog. Well, here, the nun's question of whether they had the capacity to love so soon into a grieving a loss, to expand their family in this way was superseded by their advanced faith development. Their moral obligation of saving a life outweighed their temporary love deficiencies. And so, of course, they took in Duffy. And along the way, Joan and the other nuns learned many lessons from Duffy, basic lessons about dog behavior, lessons in beauty, acceptance, empathy, balance, and the others that she explored in the work. Because of those lessons, they each enjoy great personal spiritual growth in those areas. This is the beauty of growth. Despite the constraints of our psychological development and whether our needs are being met or not, we still have the capacity to take control of a difficult situation and turn it into something that leads to our personal growth. Our faith can be a powerful tool in this process. It can be a stabilizing force in an unstable world and a driving force to change that world for the better. Part of the mission of this church, and I would argue that it ought to be the mission of any religious organization, is to build a community of faith. Everyone watching the service, the viewing community, is on a journey, a journey we call life, well, there is a kinesthetic aspect to it. The journey that we do works hardest internally with our minds and our spirit. We are always changing. We're growing, adapting, progressing, regressing, starting, stalling, flying, crashing down. And in that change, we naturally yearn for some sort of stability. Faith provides stability. When we are unsure of the strength of our own personal faith, 
isn't it wonderful that here we are a community of faith? Because we know that together we are stronger than we can be alone. Together, our faith can move mountains. That is why our purpose is, and indeed should be, to build a community of faith that inspires spiritual growth. What we want to be and to do in order to become our best selves, we most assuredly want for the world to become and to do. And individually, this task would be akin to that climber I mentioned earlier. It's such a heavy burden in addition to their own weight journeying up that steep mountain. But we are all on the mountain together. We inspire our spiritual growth by taking the journey together and by supporting each other when the burdens get heavy. Our community of faith is a family. We are connected by the buildings at 309 Washington Street, by these screens when we cannot be in person, and by the spirit which moves within each of us. We are a self-actualized body and actively seek out growth opportunities. Expanding our family is not a question of if, but of how and to whom. Those who seek us out are not likely the self-actualized spiritual adepts of the world. Instead, they are the searchers, the grieving, the wanting, those in need, who come offering us, the welcomers, a chance for growth. Those with the most needs to be met are the children of the world. June Jordan reminds us that we have to let them save us from the power we embody. Let them, the children, save us, the grown-ups, from the power we embody. Our best opportunities for growth come not when we exert our power over others, but when we are ready to be let go of the power we embody when we move it on to those who would carry it forward. Being aware of our blessings gives us the freedom to share those blessings with the world. And may the children of the world be welcomed here to come and do likewise.